for um, oil for locomotion and followed by my student non Hyung Kim who will be presenting the experimental studies. See, my last talk at Pensacola, a lot has happened to us. We built lots of pieces of Valkyrie, especially uh, the SIA, actuators, linear, and rotary. They competed in 2013 for the DRC, then had a break, uh, and now we're nearly funded by JSC. It is exciting to us. My true motivation is to make autonomous legged systems so they can help us in our daily routines. But naturally, I found it very fulfilling to actually focus on very exotic gates, like walking upwards. And here we see a gate of going upwards by bouncing uh, back and forth. And this is one of the, my motivations at this moment. This requires to plan for and control simultaneously motion and internal forces at the same time, so the robot can get a solid grasp on the terrains uh, for launching itself up, for instance. Uh, and for this, whole body operational space control is unique and ideal. And this goes led to ideas like the multi-contact model, which captures those complex behaviors, dynamic behaviors, retaining a reduced order nature. And it shall be our goal to propose these sort of models for these sophisticated locomotion behaviors, in which eventually it may allow us to produce gates in many robots, uh, with many legs, uh, um, in any terrains, and at any speed, or many speeds. But I traditionally come from the mobile manipulation world. So we had to work very hard to design whole body controllers, operational space controllers, for point foot legged locomotion. Lately, this line of research in my lab is leading to some sophisticated motion and force behaviors, like the one shown here. And here, Steven is perturbing, perturbating the robot, which is controlling the center of mass, and at the same time, is controlling an internal force that is sufficient to grasp the terrain. More sophisticated behaviors can be uh, created in the same ways. To pursue the goal of generalizing gates, we plan to focus in the following line. First, modeling and limb robots on parametric surfaces, defining stability of non periodic gates, generating and planning trajectories, formulating metrics for robustness, and designing optimal controllers. As indicated before, we use reduced order models of the center of mass, like for bipeds, the, uh, the prismatic metal model, which we project onto pre designed parametric surfaces that can conform to the terrains. This is the simple control, um, simple control system with hybrid control inputs the one shown here. The pipeline to design phase space trajectories is as follows. Given the parametric surfaces, desired full locations, and desired apex velocities, we use the prismatic vector model to estimate center of mass accelerations. We then integrate to obtain phase space manifolds of motion. Visually speaking, the red dots are the design parameters consisting of the apex velocities and foot, uh, foot locations. And the blue lines are the resulting phase space trajectories generated through the previous process. <coughs> Therefore, we can define the stability of the non-periodic gates as a progression map that takes the center of mass from one desired apex state to the next one on the phase space manifold and via the control input U. So the context switching strategy consists on first generating those trajectories, then fitting nerve curves, finding intersection points, and deriving the phase transitions between manifolds as the stabilizing contact events. Here we show a couple of examples, one left, on the left an ideal instantaneous transition between uh, single contact models, on the right a more realistic transition with the dual contact phase. Deviations with respect to those trajectories can be quantified by the tangent bundle to the trajectories, not shown here. Then optimal controls can be clearly formulated using this metric to deal with disturbances. And Don Hyun implemented variations of some of these ideas in our biped, SIA biped cube, um, which dynamically balances unsupported for 18 steps, and we claim that it is the biped with the smallest point feed that we have seen uh, stabilizing for such a long time. So uh, please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
explain how we design and build our controller and planner on our robot named Hume. Uh, in the experiment setups, we have a we utilize the motion capture systems. They are a motion capture camera on the ceiling, and they are sensing the position of the LED. The position of the seven LEDs attached on the bodies are mixed with a IMU's angular velocity data to obtain the body orientation. The other eight LEDs are for compensating kinematic error. We choose the control point in operational space that are in joint space. In single contact phase, we control low, pitch, and central mass height and uh, put position. In dual contact phase, we control the central mass height and orientation of the body. One thing we would like to point out here, uh, we include the yard control in dual contact phase. Although the dual contact phase is less than 0.02 seconds, including yard control in dual contact phase significantly reduces the yard motion, which is one of the major issues in point for bipedal locomotion. We implement a whole body operational space control in our robot. The whole body operational space control generates a torque command that is fine task while considering the dynamics and constraint. Since the whole body controller generates the torque command, we need to implement a torque controller in distributed joint. When designing the distributed joint uh, feedback, we borrow the idea from the Martin Bus cascaded control. This controller is built in DSP, which has the 2 kilohertz update rate. This is our total control scheme. Uh, more details such as uh, internal force feedback control and gain scheduling can be found in our publication. So let's talk about the planner. The our planner runs at every step. Uh, and the planner assumes the, our uh, the central mass position, uh, central mass motions of the robot can be described with a prismatic invert pendulum model. Uh, while around the middle of the lifting motions, central mass state delivered to the planner, which is a uh, yellow circle. Then planner predicts the future central mass pass by integrating the dynamics of the prismatic invert to pendulum. Uh, until the end of the swing time. And then planner finds the switching state, which is the yellow uh, one. And that's, the switching state means that uh, the landing occurs and the sense leg is switched. From this point, the planner searches the next landing location. Make, uh, that makes the central mass velocity become zero after time t prime. The more detailed explanations, including the how we extend it to the non-flat high surface, is in our paper. The planner works well, uh, even in the non-flat surface, as long as the controller provides a reasonably, reasonable performance. In this simulation, it takes the 7 cm obstacles uh, while tracking the non-flat high surface. The on the right side, there is a pace pass of the three steps in these simulations. The black and green, green lines are pretty, uh, the pass predicted by the planner, and the other colored lines are central mass pass. Then, as you can see, the inverted pendulum dynamics were described the uh, actual central mass motion. So in the simulation, Hume steps forever but the extra system cannot. Okay, so far we have achieved the 18 steps. Uh, there are still modeling error in kinematics and dynamics, and we hope to report better results. 